What's up guys, welcome to Reg Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Fisker, ticker symbol FSR, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day, Monday, January 29th. Well, Fisker stock on Friday here, finishing up about 7.5%. We're going to take a look at this one on a variety of time frames, starting from the one minute all the way up to the two year daily chart, trying to get as much context as possible to then lay out potential bullish and potential bearish scenarios here as we head into Monday. So this here is the one minute chart. I think specifically here on Fisker, we'll, we'll be able to get more short term context by looking at the more filled in five minute chart here. Now here on the five minute, as far as shorter term intraday trading um, opportunities, really all I'm seeing here is a few sloppy opportunities around that 20 period EMA. You know, you might have seen some, some traders catching two or three trades early in the morning. And then, you know, you have a pullback like here, depending on if that was taken or not, that would have been a stop out. Of course, we, we expect to lose a certain percentage of trades here as intraday traders. The entire point of the game is to have consistent and predictable statistical edge. And that comes from having a certain percentage being acceptable losers, quote unquote, good losers, right? But as far as intraday opportunities are concerned, a little bit of a sloppy chart here. So let's zoom out now to the 30 and try to get, like I said, more context about the coming day. Now here on the 30 minute chart is when I think the moving averages really start to come into consideration from a full day perspective. Because again, the 50 and the 200 on really anything from like the 30 minute, you can almost argue the 15 minute, but I like to look at the 30 minute all the way up to the daily chart. Those two moving averages are going to be the most commonly watched in the entire market on each of those charts, which is exactly why I spend so much time considering them, right? Self-fulfilling prophecy, the more eyeballs, the higher tendency they have to, to work, right? To be successful indicators, at least more often than not. Now, the only relevance that I'm personally seeing here on the 30 minute, at least in the last five trading days here on Fisker, perhaps that 50 period moving average here, you know, pre-market early on Friday, and then off the open, we had a, a pop through back test respect. And then we, of course, hung out in this channel the remainder of the day. As far as areas to watch here on the 30 minute chart, again, it's always important, I think, to be watching as many time frames as possible to try to get in a, you know, context is a very common word here on the channel to get as much context as you can possibly get about a particular stock. Because with trades, as always, especially intraday trades, it's important to try to have as many things lining up on as many time frames as possible and get as much in your favor, in your directional and timing favor, right, as possible uh, upon taking a trade. So come Monday here on Fisker, I am going to be paying attention to both the, the 50 period and the 200 period on the 30 minute chart, looking at the 50 as a potential area of support. If that fails, I think you're going to see a lot of bears from just a basic psychological perspective, considering a short down off of a, a breakdown through a retest and a, and a fade off of that retest. I think you'd have a lot of bears kind of uh, swooping in looking to enter short, which of course can manipulate price movement or more so contribute to price movement. Okay, the four hour, let's zoom out here and take a look here. Now, here's the 50 period, the white line again, the 200 period, 200 period, not incredibly relevant here on the four hour, at least in the short term, the 50 period, incredibly relevant to the upside as a potential area of resistance. So come Monday here, I'm going to be paying very close attention as well to the 50 period on the four hour, looking at it from two different perspectives, right? Um, from a bearish perspective, the bears are going to be looking at that. And if we end up seeing an upside test of that level, which as of right now is approximately, you know, that that's a big day, uh, about an equivalent day as we saw on Friday, about seven and a half percent, eight percent, somewhere in that in that ballpark. And listen, I would expect to see some some heavier volume around that region just because it's such a heavily watched level. We're going to have algorithms, institutions, and retail investors and traders making decisions around that level. Again, self-fulfilling prophecy. By the way, that's not a net positive or a net negative. It just is. So as traders, we need to accept that and utilize it to our advantage. But we know that that level may not come into play for you know at least a few days here since it is 7 8% away as of right now. But if you are bullish, you know, of course, for, for continued upside potential, a break and hold upside through there 
retest claiming that 50 period on the four hour as support never a bad thing let's zoom out now to the two hour daily chart and get the full picture here for for the best context available and let's zoom in and get a better overall view here in the in the shorter term and i think if we were looking here we should really try to zoom in okay and what we can do is we can actually do this and then get a better picture of what we're really looking at here and try to look at some levels from both a bullish and bearish perspective so listen for me it's a volatile name it's not the easiest name to come up with levels on but psychologically because a lot of these levels start off as psychological levels and turn into technical levels it looks like we may be in the early stages of establishing 75 cents a share as starting again as a potential psychological level and then turning into now over the course of kind of like four trading days here and that would be you know of course these last two and then these uh these previous trading days over here as a potential technical level additionally in addition to that psychological level so come monday ideally from a from a bullish perspective hold 75 cents if we see a test of that at all would be the absolute ideal scenario and listen especially holding 80 cents i think both of those accomplishments would be very discouraging to potential bears on the name at least in the short term and that's a really big deal if you're a bull to discourage the bears in a name that has been on a recent downtrend that way you can finally start to establish a potential bottom if you end up seeing that over the course of multiple trading days that that area being respected as support and then eventually make the way up back toward getting over a buck a share which we recently tried to do faded off of there but listen here if you're a bear on fsr you're thinking kind of two things here fade as hard as possible off of 80 cents a share get down through 75 and in the same way that a hold of that would discourage the bears good for bulls right a breakdown through 75 cents i think the bulls would would not be incredibly enthusiastic to witness that and i think that would be encouraging to the bearish side again i'm, I'm going to give both perspectives here just to make sure everyone has a, a potentially well-rounded view of the psychology currently around this stock, right? I think I think considering both sides is always good um, for directional positions as well, because you can start to understand the psychology of the other side, which will start to benefit you and your position, even if it doesn't necessarily confirm your bias. Okay, let's finish off here in the chain. Take a look what the options traders here from Friday are thinking as we head into Monday. Again, very small sample size. 40,124 total contracts traded. Relatively evenly weighted chain here as well. About 51.5% calls, remainder being puts. But again, with a small sample size, like 40,000 total contracts traded, the smaller you get in volume, the more of a grain of salt you have to take the options data because it can be so heavily skewed by just one big trader with a very particular sentiment, you know, bullish or bearish. But another thing to look at here, the short dated delta, that's 0 to 20 delta, that's the short term speculators, 5,670 calls to the bullish side, right? 3,615 puts. So yes, from the volume we have, we are seeing the short term speculation here on Fisker lean somewhat to the bullish side. But again, please, it's very, very, very low volume. You could have had one call buyer come in here by 4,000 contracts and throw this completely off. So ideally, as we move forward here on ticker FSR, I would really like to see this options volume pick up a little bit so we can get some bigger sample size, more well-rounded data. But as of right now, we'll look at it, we'll understand it, and take it with a grain of salt. Hey, listen, if you got value out of this video or you like Fisker stock here, please subscribe to the channel, maybe even leave a like on the video. It helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you in the next one.